Hey guys, welcome back to Stylized Station. If you're an environment artist who's been waiting to take the next step, this is your moment. For the first time ever, you can get all of our powerful courses for one massively reduced rate in the Stylized Mega Bundle. From environment design to hand painting, stylized character design, and even anime style texturing, this is the bundle for you. Grab it now before the price goes up. Let's get into the video. Hi everyone, I'm Florian Wagner and I'm a 3D environment artist from Germany. I graduated from my uni last year, but I realized I needed to learn a lot more in order to get my first job in the games industry. So therefore I've taken around one year to create my Venice map in Unreal Engine 5 and to learn many new workflows, techniques and programs. To learn all this, I started to take part in a mentorship course run by environment artist Thiago Klavke named Environment Art Mastery. So much of what I know now is based on his teachings from his time at Blizzard and Ubisoft. Let's just quickly go over the structure of this video. So first I'm gonna talk about references, starting out and the design and art lookout. Then it's all about my modeling workflow and the techniques I've used. After that I will present my texturing workflow, trim sheets and shaders then how I've refined and assembled the final scene as well as some composition rules. And at the end I will briefly show my physical based lighting. Alright, so I started out with just a few references. Um, my main reference was NO1404 from Ubisoft and also Assassin's Creed 2. And yeah, over time it just grew from there. Uh, just make clear what parts of a reference you like and group them accordingly. I can also highly recommend to do some research on your environment to better understand it. Like for example what kind of stone or materials in general they use, how dirt, sunlight, weather and other things influence their materials, as well as what kind of architecture it is and like for example how it crumbles over time. Okay, coming up to the design blockout, just a quick heads up. Um, I'm presenting this very linear, but for me it wasn't a linear process at all. I was jumping between art and design block out and even later did some block out as well to get a few new buildings in. So yeah, I think it's totally normal to jump around a bit. Getting the scale right from the start is one of the most important but also challenging things and using mannequins for this is essential. You can see in this early version of the design block out I was very inexperienced. And yeah, you can see the scale is all over the place and I didn't use any mannequins back then. Um, this was also completely out of a modular kit. So yeah, I completely redid this version, but the overall composition stayed the same. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage left from my new design block out. But basically what I did was using a simple modular block out kit with an auto UV scaling texture. So I didn't have to think about UVs at all at this stage, and it all looked perfectly. Also, this is the perfect time on deciding on a point of interest, as well as get the player pathing right. You can already see in this early stage that you have some streets, some wide open areas and some tighter spaces, and the paths are very clear, so players would instantly know where they can go. Well, coming onto the art block out, I basically exported all the buildings from the design block out into Maya, then rebuilt them in Maya already with the right dimensions and could now make the art block out and import them into Unreal Engine again. Well, now you can see the whole map being replaced by the art block out. As I said before, this wasn't a linear process and you can see later on that in the back there was a whole corner which got renewed and also the buildings on the opposite side of the palace got completely scratched and renewed. Alright, modeling. I decided against a fully modular approach and instead went with unique building shells made in Maya with holes for the windows and doors on the grids, so you could easily assemble them inside Unreal. As you saw in the start, I also experimented a lot with a modular approach but I felt too limited with that, so yeah, I scratched that. So this building shell is basically made out of three different parts. We've got the roof, which is now displaced, uh, with actual geometry on the edges. 
Then we have the main building walls, which are optimized for vertex painting and therefore also not nanite. And we've got the ground floor, which is also nanite displaced with the material to get some real depth in there. I did a lot of the modular work inside Maya, but then exported it as a whole. For example, the roof trims are modular inside Maya and can be easily assembled. Also the stone railing, you can see countless times throughout the level. I've made a 1 meter version first, and then I could easily adjust it to different meshes. The building shells as well as the windows and doors are fairly basic modeling, so there's nothing too interesting in that. Coming up to materials and shaders, I've made most of the materials inside Substance Designer, and for unique textures I use Substance Painter. Before we go into titles, I want to show you the edge decal I've made for this project. So this is my workflow. First I exported a 90 degree edge from Maya into ZBrush and then sculpted some edge damage onto it. Then I exported that and break it down in XNormal as a height map. Inside Substance Designer I could now apply some more edge chipping and export a normal roughness and mask map out of that. Now you just need to place some separate edges inside Maya which are slightly over 90 degrees just to avoid the fighting and just apply the edge decal material onto it and make the UVs right. Now you could easily apply edge damage to every building as well as the doors and windows. For tile builds I always used the same workflow starting with a height map and just going from there. It takes a lot of trial and error and find out what works and what doesn't. You just gotta experiment a lot. For example, this is the material I made for the Nana Displays stone bricks. And you can see it all starts with a base shape. And that's the important part, because later on, if you want to change the pattern, you can just change it and everything is updating automatically. Other than that, it's just about layering different kinds of damages, dirt, dust, and so on. I can highly recommend looking at other people's materials and also use tools to export materials out of your favorite games. When it comes to trim sheets, I've made a few different ones, starting with the window trim sheet. I've made the base inside Maya and then used vertex color to separate the horizontal and vertical wood and the faces which needed to be glass. In XNormal, I then baked a height map and ID map, which contained the different vertex colors. So in Substance Designer, I already had the base shape as well as the masked out parts for the different materials ready to go. After finishing the material inside Designer, I could just map the UVs to the trim sheet in Maya. If you don't have a base from Maya, I can recommend making the mask inside Photoshop with the grid on and divided by a power of 2. Therefore, it's easier in Maya to map the UVs with the same grid step. I've made a bunch of custom shaders, for example a simple master shader with different input textures which I can just turn on or off depending on my needs. Also with the help of Tiago I've made a procedural world scale grime shader which is part of my material layer system. The material layer system allows me to easily layer different materials on top of each other and with a blend layer I can then vertex color between them. Explaining all this shader work would take too much time here, but you can look them up and a bunch of other stuff at my art station breakdown in the description below. Just as a short explanation, basically every layer has two noise maps and world space laid on top of them, which have a bunch of manipulations and interact with the vertex color blend layer. I iterated a lot on the buildings and reused them a bunch of times to get to the final scene. You can see in my initial design block out that there was a wider variation of buildings, but I figured that I can reuse a lot more buildings to populate the map faster. After placing all the buildings, I figured that I would need to make the ground more interesting. Therefore, I bought a dead leaf scatter pack from texture.com and used the physical layout plugin from the Unreal Engine Marketplace to easily scatter around the leaves throughout the level. Next big thing was placing all the decals. I've got grime, leak, crack and rust decals. 
And as you can see, there's a lot of decals inside the level, but after close analyzation, the performance hit is still acceptable. Most of the props I bought from third party sites, and when I didn't find a fitting prop, I made it myself. Just be aware that it's common for third party sites that the props are poorly optimized. In my case, I bought a Vespa and I figured afterwards that it has 66 8K textures, which I needed to manually tweak. Also, you can oftentimes combine different props into one texture set to reduce texture memory. When it came to foliage, I just used the Megascans foliage, but I gotta admit that I went a bit overboard with the variation, as this takes a lot on the texture memory pool and the overall project size. Okay, lighting. So this is normally the part which takes the longest and the most iterations. And in my case, I started out with a custom physical base lighting approach. For this, I can also highly recommend Fast Track Tutorial's Ultimate Lighting Course. For me, I had the problem that after trying out many different HGRIs, I wasn't really satisfied with any of them, and I didn't want to pay money for better ones without knowing if they will fit. So that's when I learned about the Ultra Dynamic Sky plugin, which basically combines all the different parts of lighting into one plugin, with also tons of parameters to use. So I went with an auto exposure lighting setup just to stay really close to a real game. In the post process volume I didn't do that much changes. So I added bloom, increased the white clip and added some light color grading to better match the Mediterranean climate. The ultra dynamic sky plugin also allowed me to have different weather states and a functioning day night cycle. I've also made a small blueprint that toggles the windows so that it seems that light turns on or off inside the building depending on the time of day. In the meantime, I also found a different and better approach to this. So you can search on the Unreal Engine documentation about storing custom data in materials per primitive. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new today. You can check out the whole project and more of my Brecton over at my art station and follow me on Twitter for updates on my new project. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to Starlight Station if you haven't already. And if someone needs help, feedback or just wants to connect, my DMs are always open on all my socials. I'm happy to help out. Have a lovely day and bye.